The Fairy Dragon by Emily Joyce Hello there, are you back to join me for another adventure on board the counting ship? Don't forget you can join me on every adventure by subscribing to the Counting Ship channel. I thought today we'd cruise along the Indigo Ocean and see what new friends we can meet along the way. So get as comfortable as you can and close your eyes so you can begin to look out through your mind's eye. So now let's set sail. And over there I've spotted a strange looking rock. I've never seen anything like it this far away from the seashore. Do you see the way it trembles? and shakes and listen to the noise it's making. Why, it almost sounds as if the rock were crying. Let's sail a little closer and investigate. Well, it certainly looks like a big heavy rock. It's the size of an elephant with jaggedy edges and a silver grey sheen. But this rock is floating on top of the water. I'm not sure that this is a rock at all. Put out your hand and see if you can feel what material this strange object is made of. <gasps> My goodness! It isn't an object at all. See how it seems to move closer into your hand. It's moving even now. Why, I believe it is uncurling. Firstly, we see two grey-blue eyes peeking up from the rock. And then a whole head with two jaggedy ears pricking upwards. And then an enormous body unfurling. We were right. This isn't a rock at all. This is some kind of mystical creature. It has a large body and head with scales all over it and a long tail like that of a crocodile. And tucked into its large back are two grey wings. I think I know what it is. It's a fairy dragon. These are very rare indeed. They're sometimes used by kings and queens and lords and ladies to take them on very long voyages. They carry enormous carriages on their backs, like little rooms, big enough for their royal passengers to work at their desks, or relax on plush sofas, or sleep in comfortable beds. But this one is far too small for that. It must be a very young fairy dragon. Did you know that fairy dragons can camouflage themselves as anything they like to protect their royal passengers? But I think this poor little dragon chose the wrong disguise. A rock floating in the sea seemed very strange indeed. But see how it nozzles its little nose into your hand. His eyes look so sad, but I think he's happy to have made a friend. Every time you try to move your hand away, it nudges back into your arm. I think he must be lost. Where is your mummy and daddy, little one? Look, around his neck he's wearing a tag. Let's see what it says. It says, Sora, Trainee Fairy Dragon. Why, that must be his name. Is your name Sora, little dragon? 
I think it is. See how his ears prick at the sound of his name? And I've just noticed a saddle on his back. That must be for riding on. How will we get him back to his mummy and daddy? I have an idea about where he might live. Right in the middle of the Indigo Ocean is an enormous island. But it isn't big lengthways. It reaches up high into the sky like a steep, steep mountain or a great old tree. They call it the Island of Flight. It's home to many winged creatures who can easily travel up and down the island. Maybe we'll find his family there. But the Island of Flight is rather far away. So perhaps we can get Sora to take us on his back. Stroke the little fairy dragon's neck and calm his nerves. I think he must like you very much. See how he moves the saddle closer and keeps his back still so we can climb on top. There is just enough room for both of us. And although he's only a baby, even a baby fairy dragon can be very strong indeed. I'll take hold of his reins and whoosh! He's taking us up into the sky, beating his strong grey wings. And we're flying up, up, up into the sky. How peaceful it is to soar over the indigo ocean. Look down and see the water and waves pass us by as we soar higher and higher into the sky. I've never ridden on the back of a dragon before, have you? I can even see the seagulls flying below us. And whoa, Sora, I think that's high enough. Now let's fly onwards toward the Island of Light. And after a little while, there it is, just ahead of us. Do you see that tall, steep piece of land that towers up into the clouds? That is the Island of Flight. Isn't it beautiful? Do you see that long strip of grasses along the side of the island? Those are the famous vertical meadows. Come on Sora, take us close enough to have a look. And as we fly up the meadow, we can see long swathes of rainbow spotted butterflies. But look up there. Set into the island is a big stony hole, like a cave. Perhaps Sora and his family live in a cave like that. Let's go and see. Come on Sora, up, up and away. Up past the horizontal hills and fly through the waterfall. That's where I saw the cave. And through the opening we go. What an enormous cave. It's big enough for Sora to fly right inside. I'm sure we'll find his family here. And it looks as if there are dozens of pretty flowers hanging from the top of the cave. But these are not flowers. Why, they're tulip bats. They sleep through the day with their beautiful pastel coloured wings tucked around their heads as they hang from the roof of the cave. 
and they look exactly like tulips. But I don't see any other fairy dragons in here. Maybe we should wake up one of the tulip bats. Excuse me, sir, could you help us? Would you? Oh, give over, would you? I was having a lovely dream there. Oh, we're very sorry to disturb you, sir. But you see, we found this fairy dragon. And we were hoping you might know where his family are. You've woke me up to ask me that. How should I know, blooming kids? And he settles down to sleep again. Uh, sorry, sir, but he's only a baby fairy dragon. And we found him all alone in the middle of the sea. How oh, is he only young? Yeah, he is quite small. He's lost his mummy, has he? Poor little mite. Do you know? I can't say I'd know the first place to start, but I'll tell you would. The Oracle Owl. The Oracle Owl? And who is that? Oh, she's a very wise old owl. She knows all sorts of things. I bet she could tell you. She lives in the very top of the very tallest tree. Right at the top of the flight island. She'd help you. Thank you very much for your help. We'll go there at once. No problem. Off you go. Let's go, Sora. Off again. One big jump from the mouth of the cave and we're flying up and up into the air, past the dragonfly rock pools and further up the island. There is the top of the island and there are three trees. Sora, see if you can hover close to the top of the tallest tree. That's it. Hello, is there an oracle owl in here? Who, who, who wishes to know? We do, that is my friend and I and our new friend here, Sora. Who, who is Sora? Sora is a fairy dragon. But he seems to be lost. We're trying to find his family. Do you know where we might find them? Fairy dragons are very rare. But the Berry Isles have large aviation stables. Go to Berry Castle and ask the keeper of the Berry Isle fairy dragons. Why, of course. The aviation stables, they're sure to know about a missing fairy dragon. Thank you, Oracle Owl. Let's go now. So we're off again, soaring into the sky and dipping back down beneath the clouds. Just a little further, Sora. So now we're leaving the island of flight and all of its mysteries behind us. And we fly over miles and miles of the beautiful indigo ocean, which is as calm and peaceful as ever, chasing the sun. Let's go past the whispering whirlpool. And look, Sora seems to know where we are now. He's beating his wings with confidence. And we didn't even tell him to bear a little to the left. But he knew to do it all by himself. I think Sora remembers where he is. And he's taking us home. But oh dear. The light has faded very quickly. The clouds have gathered and there's no moon tonight. 
I know the indigo oceans as well as anyone, but if we cannot see the stars to navigate, we might get lost again. <sighs> Sora, how clever you are. I had forgotten the most important thing about fairy dragons. They're not like battle dragons. Battle dragons breathe fire, but fairy dragons breathe light. Light to guide us home. How beautiful, Sora. See the bursting of sparkling white light as it streams before us, lighting our way. And the fragments of light fall like ashes of glittering diamonds, tumbling into the sea. There, Sora, I can see the berry isles. Can you smell the sweetness of blackberries and strawberries and raspberries in the air? And Sora is gliding over the land toward the berry castle. And just over the walls is the Royal Aviation Stable. Look, Sora, it seems that someone is waiting for you. Is it the stable keeper? And as Sora lands right outside the stable, we can see it isn't the stable keeper. It's the Queen of the Berry Isles. Sora waits patiently as we clamber off the saddle on his back. And he scuttles excitedly into the most enormous stable. This is certainly his home. Sora is home. We've been so worried. The king has been searching for him all day with Sora's father, Sora gone, says the queen. We found him lost in the ocean, your majesty, and we've been trying to find his home. Thank you, thank you, says the queen. You see, Sora's mother is my own personal fairy dragon. Her name is Merrybeam, and she's been frantic with worry. We were just preparing to make our way to a ball, and Sora must have run off to chase some flying fish. He loves to chase flying fish, but we think he lost his way. Well, we're glad we could help him, your majesty. But I think we are a long way from our counting ship. May we sleep in the stable and find our way home tomorrow? I think we can do better than that, loves the Queen. I'll prepare my own royal overnight carriage and Sauragon can fly you home as you sleep on his back. Thank you, Your Majesty. That is an honour indeed. And as she goes to make the arrangements, Sora comes back out of the stable and nuzzles his nose into your hand once again. I think he's trying to say thank you too. Place your arms around his neck and cuddle him goodbye. And there in the doorway is Merry Beam herself. And she bows her head to us both before ushering Sora back into the stable to prepare him for bedtime after his busy day. And now comes Sauragon, the most enormous dragon we could ever imagine. The carriage on his back is up so high that there's a rope ladder down his back to the floor. Now climb up, you two. I can promise you my carriage is as comfortable and snug as befits a queen. You will have a perfect sleep. So now we say goodbye to the queen and climb up the ladder 
and into the carriage on Sauragon's back. And what a royal carriage it is. The floors are lined with the comfiest mattresses and strewn with plump pillows and cool blankets and sheets of the finest white cottons. And Sauragon pushes off from the ground and starts to fly. And as you lie down, the carriage rocks gently from side to side as the king's fairy dragon slowly beats his enormous wings and we fly higher and higher and through the little window every now and then we can see the glittering fragments of light as Sauragon lights our way through the night rest your head on the pillow as we fly through the sky in a royal carriage on a fairy dragon's back over the indigo ocean flying back to the counting ship flying back home what an adventure we've had this evening i hope you'll join me on the next one good night <laughs>